A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I have received from the Lord what I hand on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice after the supper saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the feast of Joseph at Bishop and Martyr. And the Mass today has been offered for the deceased members and the living members of the Legion of Mary. So as we come to pray, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to so Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters, that I have greatly sinned, and in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I accept the Mary of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for all the Legion of Mary members, living and deceased. Stir up in your church, we pray, O Lord, the spirit that fills St. Joseph had as he laid down his life for the sheep, so that through his intercession, we too may be strengthened by the same spirit and not be afraid to lay down our life for others. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Let's please open up our hearts and listen to the word of God. Beloved, and it's a reading from St. Paul to the Philemon. Beloved, I have experienced much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the Holy Ones have been refreshed by you, brother. Therefore, although I have the full right in Christ to order you to do what is proper, I rather urge you out of love, being as I am Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner for Jesus Christ. I urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment, who was once useless to you, but is now useful to both you and me. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent so that the good you do might be forced, not voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was always from you, away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother. Beloved, especially to me, but even more so to you as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. And if he has done you any injustice or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, write this in my own hand. I will pay. May I not tell you that you owe me your very self. Yes, brother, I may, may I profit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to Psalm number 146. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The Lord secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord set the captives free. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. 
The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who bow down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Blessed is he who is the father of Jacob. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he dwarfs. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Blessed is he who knows the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. 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 I am the vine, you are the branches, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, will bear much fruit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus said in reply, The kingdom of God. The coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed, and no one will announce, Look, here it is, or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. Then he said to his disciples, The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. There will be those who will say, Look, there it is, and look, here it is. Do not go off. Do not run in pursuit, not for just as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer greatly and be rejected by this generation. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel today, we learn that the kingdom of God is among you, among the Christian community, among in the members of this parish, in one another and also within you, as another translation has it. The kingdom of God, Jesus emphasizes today, is an inner experience, a spiritual experience, an experience of the heart of the mind and in baptism we receive the indelible mark, a spiritual mark of becoming children of God. And it's the job of our life to unpack and to develop and to cherish the benefits of such a mark and such distinction and honor. So Jesus is saying, you know, don't go out, sell your house, and buy a room in that, uh, you know, doomsday sect uh, uh, trailer camp in the desert of California. That's not a good idea. That's not going to work. How can people come to such a, frankly, perplexing conclusion when they read, presumably, this gospel? And this, you must understand, that is the greatness of the Catholic way of studying the Bible, as we'll see in the first reading of today, which is beautiful, but very confusing. And what the Catholic method of studying the Bible, and what a homilist, as you are being trained today to be a homilist, yes, you can do it. After all, you preach plenty at home, so what's the difference in church? <laughs> and women are better than men. I know that for a fact. So, um, you know, it, we must take into account the historical context. And, you know, all the Gospels work on two levels. You have the immediate scene, the immediate experience of Jesus and the experience of the church. Because this was written out of the recollections and the memories of what Jesus said in the context of a church, of a community, some 50 years later, Jesus didn't have a secretary that went around like Origen did, with an army of secretaries writing everything he did. That didn't happen. It was 
the recollection, the spiritual recollection of what was truly important. And here they are emphasizing several aspects of the kingdom, mostly that it's within you. And it is the manifestation of that spiritual reality within a community that can be experienced or within a person. And that's what people get to see. You know, it is written in the book of Acts that the pagans would point to the Christians in Antioch, where they were first called Christians, by the way, and they say, look how they love each other. So if we think of the church as an institution in society that is a medieval construct, but in reality the church is a spiritual reality that is based on love. Look how they loved one another. And look how the expression of that love calls us to soft service. And in that service, we may be subject to suffering. But first, it says, in order to serve his purpose, to accomplish his goal, the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by this generation. So faith always poses a challenge. Do you behave in order to attain goals that are of this earth? Or do you behave in a way? Do you suffer rejection? You come to church every day. That's weird. You must be dirty inside. My father used to think that. Imagine such a thing. I pray for his soul. My father told me that. I cannot imagine what was going on through that mind. But in reality, we see the expression of this reality of love, this kingdom of God within you, in the beautiful letter of Philemon, one of the earliest things that St. Paul wrote. And you have to understand the context, otherwise it's extremely confusing. Philemon had been converted by St. Paul, had become a Christian. That's why it says that you owe me your very life. It's here somewhere. It says, um, I say, it says, I may I not tell you that you owe me your very self. He is kind of calling in uh, Philemon's debt. Philemon has a slave, Onesimus. Onesimus has run away for some reason, and somehow he met up with Paul in Rome while Paul was in prison in Rome. And then Onesimus became a Christian, and now, and he became a very dear uh, uh, helper of St. Paul, a very close, and he calls him my child. I am sending my child back to you. Your slave, your runaway slave, is coming back to you voluntarily and you need to treat him as a Christian with love, not as the right that the immoral laws and mores of that society which tolerated slavery. Slavery was not invented in the United States, excuse me. It's a very old institution. The guys who built the pyramids in Egypt were probably slaves. Maybe. What else would tolerate that incredibly hard labor? So slavery has been around and, you know, the slave was property. And now St. Paul is declaring for his son, his dear son Onesimus. He has tasked him to obey the laws of society and go back to your owner, but he writes the owner and he says, if he owes you anything, I, I will pay. I want you to treat him differently because now he is the brother of the Lord. And this is just an example of this inward kingdom that is within us. 
sometimes it, it obeys the laws of society, but at the same time it elevates them. And the, the willingness, obedience to the demands of faith gives us a freedom that society does not know. And it gives us hope that society does not know. And it gives us the manifestation of a love that can be seen by others to the praise and honor of God and to the growth of His church. Amen. Amen. Let us now present the prayers of the faithful to God, confident that Jesus Christ is our mediator with the Father. Let us pray for the Legion of Mary, that they will continue to do the good work they do, and for all the deceased members. May they enjoy perfect happiness in the life of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We remember all the faithful departed. We remember especially uh, Brandon Jarrett and uh, Charles Haas. May God grant them eternal rest and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We have many people dealing with coronavirus. We pray that the vaccine will be successful and that all of us can live and get back to living a normal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have left the Catholic Church, may they come back to the Church of Jesus Christ and have a living personal relationship with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families to be united in love and respect, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those being persecuted for the faith, may God give them perseverance and be inspired by the example of Saint Josephat. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all young people, so many of them don't believe. They believe science has made God obsolete. May we always know there's no contradiction between science and religion. All searching leads to the truth and all truth leads to God. So we pray for our youth. May they be inspired to have a relationship with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us sum up our prayer now with our prayer for our deceased. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. And let the petrol out of them. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Most merciful God, pour out your blessings upon these offerings and confirm us in the faith that St. Joseph had professed by the shedding of his blood through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and to raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your spirit, you never cease true heart to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord, your promise would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly in earth, and while with all the church, as one voice, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And today a short quote from St. Augustine. St. Augustine born in the year 354. He said, 
Christ is both the priest offering himself and himself the victim. He will that the sacramental sign of this should be the daily sacrifice of the church, who since the church is the body and he is the head, learns to offer herself to him, recognizing this bread what hung on the cross and in this chalice what flowed from his side. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when his once raised disciples are now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity, among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is in most holy trinity past Christiane by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Joseph, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you. Always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other in the sign of peace. 
Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly table, O oh Lord, bestow on us a spirit of fortitude and peace, so that following St. Joseph's, uh, St. Joseph's example, we may willingly spend our lives working for the honor and unity of the church through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I think that I'm one of the bravest people I know because every week I've been coming here speaking after Deacon Ed's <laughs> about the same subject, him with his beautiful, glorious, eloquent thoughts. But that's me, I'm brave, I'm determined, and here I am. You're more practical, and you have more experience, and you have committed fewer sins. <laughs> I promise you. Now, we have to understand that Philemon is that this is it. That there's just one this one letter, uh, and it's verses seven to twenty is pretty much the whole thing. Uh, there's no other chapters. This is it, uh, and it's a letter to yes, Philemon, a friend of Paul's, a Christian, but also to others, Aphia, our sister, meaning sister in Christ, and Archippus. Archippus, our fellow soldier, and possibly even the real owner of Onesimus, the slave in question, but Philemon is the most prominent Christian here and therefore the one Paul refers to the most. Even though Paul does not actually say Onesimus should be freed from his status as slave, he hints at such an action. Looking at other biblical references, namely Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, and we see that, that in this indirect yet very personal way of faith, the Bible was preparing us for the emancipation of slaves. Makes me feel a lot better. In the Gospel, Luke 17, 20 to 25, the questioners pressed Jesus for an answer. When will the reign of God come? Jesus puts aside the two W's, when and where, something to remember when the end of the world's date is being predicted as it was in 2000. I knew for myself when this pandemic began, it was announced that the churches were being closed. And I said, it must be the end of the world. No, there is no particular all holy place where the kingdom of God must appear, as though one country is better than another, and also it is not to be identified with a point of time. Jesus' final answer is really quite consoling. The reign of God is already in your midst. Yes, intimately, personally rooted within us is the kingdom of God, Jesus dwelling within us. Look no further. Amen. Amen. Wait a minute, I have another comment. <laughs> when I left for Tennessee last July, I left for many reasons. Uh, I needed a job and I was fed up with the one I had here. Uh, I, I was bored. 
So I used to do all these homilies during the weekend, uh, weekdays, and then I left. And the Holy Spirit in fire inspired our pastor. Yes, that's possible. The Holy Spirit can inspire our pastor. And he decided that lay people have the potential to do what you have heard, which is very well done. It, it brought out a different aspect that, since I'm limited to only two minutes of speech, I, I have to choose carefully what I need to say, so I can't say anything. So the fact that you did it was great. Very complimentary, don't you agree? So, so this is the future of the church. Yeah. It's not in turning your back against the people, that is not the answer. And I will say that to anybody. Because the very people who change the liturgy, and the liturgy is, all, is the product of the church, and not the other way around, <laughs> the council has every authority to change the liturgy. Popes did it back in ancient times. But the point is that this empowerment of the laity is what will fix all the problems that you can think of about the church. Because when you have an educated spiritual lady, which is what you're reading about in this Philemon thing, this is not science fiction, it's directly applicable. It's a picture of the early church and the, the spiritual development of, spirit, of lay people. So that is going to be, that fills me with such joy because I feel the longing that every member of the church needs to have for the development, the maturity, and the spiritual security of each of our members. That is what we must feel for each other. That is the longing and the vision that we must have for each other. Amen, amen, amen. And your two minutes, your two minutes, your two minutes is up, and for your penance, you have to set up for bingo. <laughs> Got a cute email here. A little boy sat on the curb crying with his little dog beside him. A priest came along and the boy asked him, will you baptize my dog father? He replied, we don't baptize dogs. Gee, more the little boy, I've saved up $60 to have him baptized in the Catholic Church. Oh, exclaimed the priest, why didn't you tell me he was Catholic? <laughs> Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ascended, go in peace. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And the Lord of your faithful. And the Lord of your Spirit. And we shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit. Instruct our hearts and faithful. Right.